What is up, heroes? This is Minute Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, oh boy, in the last episode, there was a lot that went down, and we found ourselves now with Clover and Timioji both dead, handcuffed to this sink in, well, not, I guess, the uh, the ideal position for our, I guess, our whole party, right? The Nonary game has not gone so hot for many of the participants in it, and, well, I don't think it spells very well for Phi or Sigma as well. So let's, I guess, see what few things we can do to give us some means of optimism as, you know, we progress. What are you doing? Examining their bodies. Temyoji first. Why? Clues. What kind of clues? I mean, there could be a variety of things, right? Items left behind, which has happened in other areas of the facility, right? As well as, I don't know, Signs of some sort of attack. Like, look at Clover's wrist. It's apparent that she either struggled against the handcuff or was attacked there beforehand. To who might have killed them? Finding Quark's bracelet tells us something. If the killer saw it, that would make for an obvious motive. Yeah, I mean, with Quark's bracelet, they knew that Quark was either dead or at the very least could, didn't have his own bracelet. And as a result, Temyoji and Clover could, on their own, go through the door, right? Uh, if, I don't know, whoever the killer was wanted Temyoji and Clover dead, they wouldn't actually need to do anything about it so long as they didn't have Quark's bracelet, and Quark's bracelet was nowhere to be found, right? With Quark's bracelet, Clover and Temyoji would have been able to go through the white doors. The killer handcuffed them to the sink to prevent that. Right. That's my guess, at least. That's odd. What's wrong? I can't find anything. Huh? What are you looking for? I should have found something. What? You remember when we ran into Temyoji in the rec room? He sprayed our wrists with luminol. I'm sure I saw him pull the spray bottle out of his pocket. And now you can't find it. That's pretty interesting, right? Whoever killed Temyoji and Clover either wanted to use the Luminol themselves to find out who killed the old woman, or killed the old woman and thus wanted to prevent... I don't know. Wanted to prevent anybody else from gaining access to the Luminol, right? so that they couldn't be discovered at some point. Ah. Right. Do you think the killer took it? I don't know. I guess that is a good question, right? We are working under the assumption that whoever killed them took the Luminol, but I guess it is possible that they could have been killed and then somebody else stopped by, found the bodies, and then took the Luminol, right? I'm going to take a look at Clover, too. Give me a minute. Fine knelt down next to Clover as she spoke, and began to gingerly examine her corpse. Then after a moment, I saw her hands stop. Look. See your thigh? Doesn't it look like there's something written there? 11037? <laughs> yeah, it does. I'm sorry, I'll have to move your leg a little bit. It's written in blood, so the... So she is pulling a Leon. It must be Temyoji's. It says 016. Hmm, what else could that be interpreted as? Well, it could be 910 if flipped upside down, right? If inverted, it could be something like BL0 for, like, blood. It could be 0LB, like 0 pounds. It could be... Hmm... D-L-O, if you were to invert it a certain way, but I'm not really seeing a whole lot, and even the number 16, like 016 or 910, neither of those really jump out as being relevant. So I don't, I don't know. What does that mean? Hang on. I feel like I've seen that somewhere. Phi feels like she's seen that somewhere? Is this like a, like a memory from another timeline, probably? 
the other thing that comes to mind is is there anything more right it looks like her left leg could actually be or her left thigh could be covering up other parts of it I'd imagine Phi would have exposed all of it though but it is very clear that Clover used her finger to write that right noting the blood on the tip hmm why is it a particular code for somebody who would eventually find her dead body? Is it a clue as to who the killer was? Could it be both, right? 016. Was that written on one of the bombs or something? 016. I know I've seen it somewhere. Where though? It's no use. I can't remember. Don't get my hopes up like that. Anyway, these numbers have to have something to do with the killer. She must have written them after she got hit with the soap there would have been a few minutes before she went all the way under when she could have done something. I think she'd probably use those last minutes to tell the rest of us who'd killed her. 016, huh. 016. Is that, are there, is that a set of numbers that can be interpreted some other way? Like 01 as opposed to lose? 6? Hmm... I don't know. Maybe, but the only people who could have done it are Kay and Dio. Assuming it wasn't one of us, I mean, well, it still, I guess, technically could be Quark. No. There's also Quark. I mean, if there's number one rule in visual novels like this is if you haven't found the body, you don't know that they're dead. Sometimes, even when you do find the body, they might not be dead. I mean, I'm not saying he did it, just... Darn it. This is hopeless. I can't keep up anymore. Everything here is a darn mystery. Are we getting to the end of the timeline? Like, what about that old woman we found? Who killed her? The movement of the AB room makes Luna seem the most suspicious. But when would she have done it? And we don't have a good explanation for why she would have wrapped the knife up in the, the handkerchief. And of course, now Luna's dead too. So who could have killed her? The footage from the security camera, paired with Dio's behavior, makes Clover seem like the most likely suspect. But now we'll never know for sure. Alice's killer is a complete mystery. We don't know what the heck 016 is supposed to mean. We don't have any idea where Quark's gone. What the heck does any of this mean? Who killed everyone? Was it Zero? Zero Senior? And who is Zero Senior? What the heck does he want? Why does this game even exist, and why did they kidnap us and bring us here? While we're at it, where is this? When is this? Sigma brings up a lot of very valid questions. Mysteries. 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 I feel like my head's about to explode. Please, Fi. Give me something, anything, a clue, a hint. Come on, you've got to have something. Is this the moment where we finally get another premonition? Is this one of those locks where we're going to have to find some other bit of information? The luminol. Huh? I think there's a very good chance someone took the spray bottle out of Temyoji's pocket. Okay, but how is that important? Well, let me ask you this. Why do you think they took it? 
So they could test for blood? What would they need in order to do that? They just need to spray the bottle at whatever they want to test. That's it? No, wait, you're right. Luminol reacts with organic compounds and glows, but the glow is really faint. So... So... So you need to make it dark. You have to turn off the lights in order to see if anything's glowing. And that would mean... That would mean... The rec room! Fine, I raced for the door. So I guess we're running to the rec room. Although, I will say, we talked earlier about how there are two possibilities, right? The person who took the luminol took it so that nobody else could access it because they're the killer who would be incriminated by using the luminol, right? This doesn't account for that. This is working under the assumption that the person who took the luminol is intending to use the luminol to reveal who the killer is, and thus isn't the same person who killed the old woman, which in this case we think is Dio, right? And if that's the case, that actually incriminates K for the death of Clover and Temyoji. Right? It's been a minute since I recorded the last episode, so I don't remember the like specifics of that timeline with K, Dio, Clover, and Luna in Crew Quarters Room 2. And I remember thinking that it, it could have been Dio who grabbed the knife from Alice or something like that and, and ran off with it. And Dio was likely to have caused Temyoji and Clover's murder, but... But at the moment, it seems like the person who took the luminol is different from the old woman's killer. And we know from that other timeline, assuming that it's the same in this timeline, which I guess isn't a guarantee, that Dio was the killer in another timeline. Hmm. That's so odd. Anyways. We weren't sure what we'd find, but we knew where we were going. I had a feeling deep in my gut that whatever we found would be the breakthrough I'd been looking for. So we head to the rec room. Who are we going to find? Quark? K? Dio? Some mix? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. And whoever took the luminol would have had to have gone to the rec room with the person they wanted to, I guess, check on, right? So... I don't know. How do you get that person there, right? Let alone find them amongst this entire facility. In such a short time frame, too? Well, here we are. Nothing there. Nothing over there. Nothing there. And what? Both of them are dead? K and Dio are dead? What? I expected to try to find K or Dio alive trying to get the other person to comply with getting sprayed by Luminol, but both of them are dead? Did somebody kill both of them? Did they kill each other? And if so, in what order? I mean, K couldn't have done that to himself, right? So K must have been killed by either Dio or Quark. It's tough to imagine Quark having done that with an axe, right? Right? So Dio probably killed K. And then, I guess, K in one last-ditch effort killed Dio? That's, that's my initial read, but... I guess maybe if K had the Luminol and was trying to check Dio, Dio would have felt threatened and thus attacked K. And maybe that's what set it off? Are we the only... Is it just us and Quark who are potentially alive? Everything in my head ground to a halt. Even after all I'd seen, a room full of corpses had a profound effect. It was such a ridiculous thought that, before I could stop myself, I laughed. That laugh made me think. 
Was laughter in this situation a defensive response designed to protect a brain from constant emotional bombardment? Yes, yes it is. It's actually um, a mature response to stress. They say that right before an animal dies, it feels a moment of comfort. Right before death, the brain releases a huge amount of endorphins into the bloodstream. Bloodsteam. <laughs> Pain is only a warning signal meant to help the body avoid death, but when death becomes a certainty, pain no longer has any use. In fact, that loss of pain can lead to incredible feats on the edge of death. Let's say that two species of animal come under attack from some overwhelming force. All of them are severely wounded and near death. Species A feels pain, but species B does not. The horrible pain felt by species A prevents them from moving, but because they feel no pain, some of species B will manage to drag their wounded bodies to safety and survive. As a result, species A is eliminated and only species B managed to, manages to survive. This process of natural selection has been repeated for thousands, no millions of years. All creatures that walk the face of the earth are descended from species B. I'm no exception. That's why I can look at a room full of corpses and laugh. The genes I've been given by a million years of evolution have changed my fear into ecstasy. Wow, that's, that's maybe not the word I would have chosen, but but I understand the analogy, and I, I get the point, and the sort of like perverse feeling in, in inner conflict Sigma's experiencing at this moment, right? I guess this means you and I are the only survivors. Don't make me keep saying it. Quark's still out there somewhere. Yeah, you're right. He is still out there. So would that mean he killed them? I mean, you said yourself that there was no way there was a tenth uninvited player out there when Alice was killed. Yeah, that's actually a possibility I hadn't really considered. And we've also refuted the possibility of Zero Senior being the tenth person. There is no tenth person. The only people alive are you, me, and Quark. That means... You're being ridiculous. Look at their bodies. There's an axe buried in Kay's back, and this spear has been thrust all the way through Dio's stomach. Do you really think a child quark size could do that? Not really. I guess it's not completely outside of, you know, the realm of possibility, but unlikely, right? Alright then. Are you saying you killed them? Are you insane? And just when would I have done that? I've been with you this whole time. She was right. After the end of the second round of the AB game, Fi and I hadn't been out of each other's sight. We'd gone through the white door, explored the security office, solved puzzles, all of it together. Except for one moment, right? No, wait. There had been one time. One time when I wasn't watching. The few minutes in the security office when I'd rested on the couch. Could she have snuck out then? The rec room and the security office weren't that far away from one another. If the round trip took about a minute and she killed them in four minutes, then the whole thing would have only taken her five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes, huh? Could she have done it? I'm trying to remember when we discovered everything. Hmm. I don't know. Just how long had I been out, right? That's another thing, because we don't really know how long... Sigma had been out. I guess it wouldn't be a bad habit to get the idea of like regularly checking the clock on the, the bracelet so that you had an idea of just how long time had been passing should you not be able to check for some period of time, right? Um, for example, losing consciousness for this exact type of situation. No, that wasn't really right. I hadn't really been out. I just felt like everything was being fast forwarded, probably because my mental processing speed had dropped. But how long had I been like that? It might have only felt like a few seconds to me, but it could have been much longer. Kind of like when you fall asleep watching a TV show or something, and then you wake up at the end and you're like, Oh yeah, I was totally watching, blah, blah, blah. And everybody's like, nah, 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 you've been asleep for like 15 minutes. And you're like, what? I just closed my eyes, you know? 
That's exactly what this is feeling like. And where had something like mental processing speed dropping come from? Yeah, I mean, I guess there's the possibility Phi drugged him somehow, right? She certainly is capable. Uh, hey, what you doing there, Phi? Checking their bodies, like before? I decided to start with Dio. Find anything? Yeah. Two things, actually. Oh? Take a look at this. A knife? Does, does that say... Myrmidons? I only know that from Fire Emblem. But Dio's got the knife. Yeah, and I'd imagine that's the knife from Alice. So I think he did go into that room and take the weapon from Alice's body, and then left with that weapon. There's something engraved on the blade, too. And I guess it would make sense then... Right? Given the slash on Temyoji's hand that Dio probably attacked them, and handcuff them in that situation. But if Dio is the, late, the person who killed the old woman, why why would he take the luminol? He probably didn't, which means K probably took the luminol after having found Temyoji and Clover dead inspecting their bodies and then going after Dio essentially. And then once finding Dio, going to the rec room and confronting him about the luminol, the blood on his wrist, and then Dio tries to kill Kay, and Kay in one last ditch effort kills Dio. Or something like that. Myrmidons. Is that the name of the manufacturer? Don't know. It's not a name I've ever heard of before. But look at the handle. You've seen it before, right? This is the knife that was stabbed into Alice's chest. Right. From the looks of it, I guess the blade is about 15 centimeters long. I'd say it's probably about 3 centimeters tall and 3 millimeters wide. Really? Just looking at it, you can gauge like 3 millimeters? Hmm. I think I've heard those numbers before. Like wound cavity 150 millimeters, wound length 30 millimeters, wound width 3 millimeters. Yeah, that's it. When Luna scanned the old woman's body, those were the numbers it gave us for the wound. Ah, so she didn't actually like try to measure those on the spot so much as guess. Yeah, does it look like it's about the size of the wound that I that she remembers? Yeah, seems about so. Hmm. Alright, well, wound cavity would be the depth of the wound. Wound length would be how long it is from top to bottom. And wound width would be how wide the flat end of the wound is. In other words, those numbers describe the size and shape of the wound, right? Right. So if they match, then that means this knife was used to kill the old woman. Well, I was just eyeballing those measurements, so we can't be sure. Huh. But at the same time... So if that's the knife that was used to kill the old woman, and it's the knife that was used to kill Alice, in this timeline, it looks like... Well, we still don't know who killed Alice. But we know from the other timelines that Alice likely killed herself due to infection with Radical Six, right? But it also means that in the other timelines, she probably killed herself with the same knife. Meaning, the events involving the knife are likely conserved between timelines. Which I guess is good to keep in mind. Still, why does Dio have it? He must have gotten it from Alice. I know that. What I mean is, why'd he take it? Did he want to destroy the evidence? Maybe he was the one who killed Alice. That would match up with what we saw. No, wait. Hold on a second. I'm getting confused here. Alice would have had that knife first, right? 
She picked it up when she found it wrapped in the handkerchief next to the AB room. Right. So Dio took it from her and stabbed her? Unlikely. If that's what happened, why didn't he just take the knife then? Why leave it there for us to see, then come back and get it later? Yeah, that's a really good point. Also, sorry you guys, the, uh, the area around me with 4th of July related stuff, you might hear some fireworks. Well, we can look into that more later. First, I want you to have a look at something else. What? Don't you remember what I said? I found two things. There was the knife, and... This. Oh, isn't that what we found in Gollum's Bay? Isn't that what we found in Gollum's Bay? I think it is. Right? If so, and this is in Dio's pocket, Dio must be the person who was able to access that room before anybody else and open the safe solely to have this on hand. And if somebody went out of their way to find this, they must know, one, what it is and why it exists, and two, they must have some, well, not must, but very likely have murderous intent towards K. Now, it would fit with the description of Dio being the killer of, well, literally everyone else, right? Hey, this is that key. What do you mean, that key? We found it in the Gollum Bay. Didn't have any idea what it was for then, though. But Alice said it might be important, so she'd hang on to it just in case. So Alice should have had this, right? Oh, so that what I described was from a different timeline, but in this timeline, Alice had it, and so Dio likely took it from her at that time as well. Yeah. And now Dio's got it. Yeah. So when Dio took the knife, he also took K's key. Wait, yeah, is that a slip? K's key? Oh man. You couldn't figure it out from the shape? What do you mean? Get over here. Picture is worth a thousand words. Let me show you. Yeah, it matches up that sort of keyhole on his neck, right? She walked over to Kay's head, knelt down on one knee, and pointed to the back of it. Oof, that's awfully bloody. You remember this, right? Oh yeah! So that's it. It unlocks the suit, right? Yeah. Let's give it a shot. Before I had time to prepare myself, I shoved the key into the slot and twisted. But... It's not working? Why not? It's no good. I can't get it open. Why not? Maybe the suit is powered and it needs to be on in order to open. Yeah, that's pretty feasible. But with this axe in here, you're saying it shorted the suit out or something. I think so. Aw oh, man. So we're not going to see what Kay looks like, unfortunately? We're not going to reveal Kay's identity? Ugh. But at any rate, the key fits perfectly, yeah. So that at least confirms its function, right? I don't have any doubt it's for removing Kay's suit. Do you think Dio knew that when he took it? Yeah, it's a good question. It also makes me wonder why Zero included it in the game, right? to mean that some group of people is eventually going to find this key and potentially discover that it's for Kay's suit. Or Kay is going to find out that other people discovered it because they're going to come back to the group and be like, we found this thing, but we have no idea what it's for. And Kay's going to be like, hey, that's the key to my suit. Maybe say that out loud, maybe keep it a secret knowing it could reveal a huge secret, right? And then maybe that'll serve as a motive for Kay to, I don't know, kill people or something. Hmm. I wonder. 
So I guess we'll never know what his face really looks like. Not in this timeline, I guess. Yeah. No way we can get that mask off with our bare hands. I wonder who he was. Well, I still haven't checked him over. Yeah, I mean, he's got that big, like, cape thing, right? So you gotta check it out. Let's have a look. Maybe we'll find something that'll tell us who he is. She'd only been searching a few seconds before she stopped and pulled something out of Kay's robes. Look. What is it? A spray bottle with luminol in it. Ooh. So Kay did take the luminol. So Kay must have found Temyoji and Clover's body at some point. I don't think Kay killed them. So Kay found the body and then went to the rec room with Dio? So Kay had to have probably found Dio ahead of time to take him to the rec room. It's unlikely Dio was probably just like hanging out in the rec room, right? That's the one Temyoji had. Yeah. Then does that mean Kay was the one who handcuffed them to the sink? We don't know yet. Why not? K might have taken the spray from Temyoji after he died. It's possible he made it through the white doors before we did, went to the infirmary and got this. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. Anyway, there's something I want to see. Turn off the lights. Are you going to check for a luminol reaction? No, I think she's going to check to see if luminol had been sprayed before these events took place, right? If there's no luminol that had been sprayed, it's an indicator that whatever took place, well, took place before it was confirmed whether or not Dio actually killed somebody, right? Let alone specifically the old woman. But if there is luminol, and it's only on Dio's wrist, then it supports the idea that all of these events ensued after Dio was, well, essentially convicted of having killed the old woman, right? Yeah. If Kei used the spray before he died, we might still be able to see it. There's blood everywhere in here, though. That's okay. If you didn't spray it, there won't be a reaction from any of it. Come on. <laughs> Little shade from Fi. As is usual. Alright, do it. Done. Thanks. Hmm. Just as I thought. Look. Dio's left wrist. There it is. The underside of his bracelet is glowing. I'm still trying to think, can we really clear Fi in this whole situation? It wouldn't be out of reason, out of, you know, hmm, it really wouldn't be that far out there to say that Fi could have done this. It's just that, I don't know, for all of this to take place during that time period, without her really knowing when Sigma's gonna wake up? The question though is also, if Fi were to have drugged Sigma, she actually may have had a predicted amount of time before everything before he would wake up. If she used a drug that he knew, or that she knew, like a specific amount of time where he'll be knocked out for likely, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour, she would know she has a certain amount of time to do that. She would have to, she would have to set up a lot of stuff though, like a lot of stuff, to get both Tambyoji and Clover in the same place, handcuff them, set up this whole scenario with taking the Luminol, giving it to, and then eventually killing Kay and Dio and killing them in such a way that allows her to put their bodies like such, putting the luminol on K, and construct this whole story that they're now being walked through then, right? It's not impossible, especially for a character like Fi, who's incredibly logical and, you know, thinks, you know, tens of steps ahead, but it still doesn't seem any, it certainly doesn't seem more likely than what we're currently thinking is the most probable sequence of events. So that. Exactly. But why? Because there are traces of blood on it. 
Who's blood? We've seen five people with serious bleeding. The old woman, Alice, Temyoji, and these two here. I'm disinclined to think this is Dio or Kay's blood, though. See, if you look, it's been wiped off. Except for the luminol, the bracelet looks clean. Why would somebody wipe blood off of a bracelet after being hit with an axe or stabbed with a spear and then spray it with luminol? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> then that leaves the old woman, Alice, and Temyoji. Right. Of course, we know that it's likely the old woman. Almost certainly the old woman, rather. Do you remember what Temyoji said to us in this room? Can I see the other side of your bracelets? Please, just do it. Do you think Temyoji had figured out that one of the bracelets would have blood on it? That would have meant he was looking for either Alice's blood or the old woman's. Hmm, I wonder which it was. No idea. But whatever the case, Temyoji seemed to think that whoever had this bracelet was Zero Senior. Just relax, okay? That's all I needed to know. What? Neither one of you is Zero Senior. Are you saying that because there wasn't any reaction from the Luminol? Yep. Whoa, wait. Are you saying that Dio is Zero Senior? I don't know. Classic, everybody listening to Fi and being like, Wait, are you saying with 100% certainty that this is your conclusion and this is the truth? And Fi has to explain time and time again, I'm just saying it's a possibility, guys. <laughs> The only thing I can say for sure is that there's a possibility that Dio killed the other six victims. Then who killed Dio? K, perhaps? After he was attacked, he was the last of his strength. Another descendant of Species B. Huh? Nothing. Forget about it. Anyway, if Zero Senior was Dio, then... All of this would be over. Yeah, that's actually a great point. I wonder if, well, the Nonary game in its entirety would just come to a screeching halt if Zero Senior died. Or if it would be allowed to continue to play out, right? This awful game would be over. What? Excuse me, an ambidex gate has been opened? What? That's gotta be Quark, right? It could only be Quark. Forty-five minutes remain until ambidex game polling closes. What? What the heck is happening? That's impossible. Quark. Quark? Quark opened a gate? Let's think. There could be a tenth person. We haven't complete we're not able to completely rule that out. It could be Quark. And there are a couple different things to consider. Why would Quark open an ambidex gate? There's no there's no reason to. The only thing I can think of is. Quark opened the Ambidex Gate to lure us there to potentially attack us and kill us. And if so, that makes me inclined to think Quark had more of a role in these other deaths than we've been giving him credit for. Because Quark has 9 points. Quark doesn't need to play through any Ambidex games. There is the very, very slight chance that Quark thinks some people might be alive, and if he wants to see who's alive and give them the chance to escape with him, he would start an Ambidex game as well. 
I really don't think that's likely. It's technically a possibility though. The other thing is similarly there could be a 10th person who is also trying to draw out any survivors in order to attack them. Hmm. But yeah, I mean Quark would easily be able to play, I guess, the Ambidex game, knowing that Clover and Temyoji are dead, right? So there's no risk involved, but there's also no need to play anymore. So yeah, I, I'm almost certain that whoever opened this Ambidex gate is doing so with malintentions toward Fine Sigma. Whatever, we need to get back to the Floor A warehouse. Hurry! I know, I'm coming. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly a good idea to go, but you definitely need to go with ca while exercising caution, right? There's far from a guarantee that you can even get to that warehouse safely. Somebody could be waiting along every pathway remaining to get back to floor house or warehouse floor on floor A. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't think this is going to turn out well. I definitely feel like this is the everybody dies timeline. Maybe fine Sigma included. But hey, we'll see. Certainly wouldn't be the first time I thought one thing was going to happen, but the game progressed some other way, right? Alright, here we are. Darn it. There's no one here. But notably, the Ambidex room is open, right? That one door had been opened, and so it's not closed. If all six were closed, it would mean that somebody had opened a door and then entered the AB room and started the AB game, thus closing the door, and we wouldn't know which room it was, right? Darn, there's no one here. Did they run off? Why would they run away? Heck if I know. How the heck did Quark open an AB gate anyway? Without a star key, he shouldn't have been able to get it open. He could have taken it from one of the dead bodies. He must have taken one from Dior K before we got to the rec room. Which means Quark would have gotten to K and Dio before we did? We know they went through a white door. Remember, we saw the footage in the security office. That means they had a star key, just like we did. But you didn't find one when you searched them. Right. Well, maybe Quark's a suspect after all, then. You shouldn't write him off just because he's a kid. I mean, there's always the chance he found their dead bodies, right? Not that he, you know, killed them specifically. Maybe he knows how to use a lance or an axe. That's impossible. You're being an idiot. <laughs> it's much more likely he found the keycard after they died. Oh. Hmm. Alright, let's go find him. Any ideas where to look? Nothing. Not even a premonition? How on earth would I know where he might be? Hmm. Well, there's one place I'd like to check out. Come on. Do you know something I don't? Well, I guess there's one place that's been opened that we haven't checked out yet, right? And that would be the door that K and Dio progressed through. Ah. The room Dio and K investigated. Right. Aren't you curious? Of course. Besides, Quark might be there. Yeah. Alright, let's move. I wonder what type of room it is. The director's office? The door says director's office. Probably belongs to the director, huh? You don't say. But I wonder, is it the director of this facility prior to it being, I don't know, converted to the Nonary game? Or the director of the Nonary game itself? Probably the former. I hope it has one of those chairs. Chairs? <laughs> you know, the folding ones that say director on the back? I've always wanted to sit in one and say stuff like action, or cut, or double decaf chai soy latte now. And that's what you think we'll find in there? Oh, Sigma. Yeah. 
Aren't you excited? Well, there could be anything in there, so no, not really. Yeah, what if Zero Senior was in there waiting for us? That would make things easy. <laughs> That's a good point. We'd settle things right now and then get the heck out. Right. Okay, good open it. For like the 50th time, you don't need to keep asking me if... Here we go. Interesting. So some letters thrown about the room. In red. Safe. Computer. Huh. There's no one here. What decision would have led us to going into this room, right? Because it clearly looks like an escape room we could have solved. That computer's been turned on. Yeah. Maybe Dio and K did that. What the heck is this? A lion is biting a sun. It has a couple input fields for a user ID and a password. We probably can't use it unless we know what those are. Why don't you put something in? Sure. I'll give it a shot. What's she gonna try? KSDA four IUSD. Is that any? Is that meaningful at all? The password is nine digits, or maybe that's just how it's being represented. But yeah, just as I thought. Might as well forget about this thing for now. We can't get anywhere without a password. Let's see if we can find any other clues. This is the director's office, after all. If we turn the place upside down, we're bound to find something. Shall we? Fi turned and headed off toward a bookshelf, leaving me alone next to the desk. I felt compelled to stay, and found myself staring at the screen. A lion biting the sun. A lion biting the sun. A lion biting the sun. Memento Mori, if the ninth lion ate the sun. Remember death, if the ninth lion ate the sun. Could, could this be the ninth lion? Then, maybe... Whoa. So, that's the old woman's body and it says Memento Mori on it? Okay. Remember death. And there's Alice's body. Remember death. Now here's Luna, and again it says Memento Mori. Right? Wait, what? Remember death? That's Dio. Oh, that's Dio from that pod, though, from a different timeline. So we're looking at deaths of all the characters, I think, from different timelines, because we're not even seeing the Dio death from this timeline right now. Remember death. That was where we had discovered he was the killer of the old woman, and then we put him in there for the sake of, I guess, like, keeping him on lockdown. But then somebody went in there and killed him. Memento Mori. Interesting. What is this depicting? This is Kay's death, supposedly, but we haven't... I don't think we've seen this yet. It looks like the mask was taken off, and maybe that's his head on the right-hand side? Where is that? Remember death. I think that's with the scalpel in her chest, Alice. Remember death, Memento Mori, if the ninth line ate the sun. Memento Mori. And that's Alice as well, but why show Alice twice? Two different deaths? 
Remember. The one solo. I think that's Alice as well. Oh my goodness, this music. What? We're supposed to... We're supposed to know? The user ID and the password from that? Remember death if the ninth line ate the sun. Memento mori if the ninth line ate the sun. How does that tell me what the ID and password are? Am I really supposed to know? Um... I don't know, guys. <laughs> Nothing's jumping out to me, at least. Am I really supposed to know from just that flashback? Those premonitions, looking at all the different timelines? It makes me think so. But I really... I don't know. Remember death. Memento Mori. None of those are nine characters. If the ninth line ate the sun. In including the E, right? Because there weren't enough letters otherwise. That's what it is. If the ninth line ate the sun is 18 characters, and it splits up nicely. The user ID is, and that's why that E was necessary. If um, the, what was it? Ninth? Memento Mori, if the ninth lion ate the sun. So if the password, hang on one second. If the password is eight, the sun, and then we, I included the if up top, but I shouldn't do that. If the ninth lion, ninth lion, right? Maybe this is it. Ooh. What was I just thinking? <laughs> Maybe it's ninth without the E then? Maybe not. Maybe maybe I'm not. Uh, so clearly that's an error. But I'll I'll try ninth, just like this. Ninth lion and then eight the sun. That's not it. Why was that e necessary? And if the ninth lion ate the sun. Hmm. Because ninth line eight the sun would be eighteen would be two you know sets of nine characters, like I just demonstrated. But we can even go numbers. We can. Is this where zero one six plays a role? Is this the ninth line eating the sun that we've seen? Possibly. There's usually one in each escape room up until this point. And we've solved quite a few escape rooms. I feel like this is huge. And based on that flashback, it makes me think I should know this. Memento Mori. Remember death. It ended with Alice, right? So there was one. There were there was one shot of Alice, and then a close up of Alice, and then a close up of Alice's bracelet. Maybe that was the 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 takeaway from that sequence of flashbacks. Alice's bracelet. Is it Radical Six? I can't use a dash, so no, that wouldn't make sense. Granted, I don't. I guess I don't have to use all nine characters for the ID and the password sections.
is the ID Alice. And the password, what would the password be? Is that maybe what the takeaway is? That Alice is potentially the user of this, hmm. Maybe it's Myrmidon? That doesn't seem relevant, though, with remember the, uh, remember death, if the ninth lion ate the sun. I don't know, guys. I really don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Ah, I want to know. My, my, I guess my real question is, should I know at this point? Am I, because I want to know the answer, but if I shouldn't know the answer, if I don't have enough clues, I don't want to be sitting here forever trying to think of it. If I should know, and I do have enough clues to figure it out, then I won't mind sitting here trying to think through it as much. But even then... Is the ID Quark, maybe? Password? I don't know. I don't think that's it. What if the user were Alice and the, the password were just 016? No. We can access our archive, which is pretty interesting. We found quite a bit. There's still clearly a lot to find though, right? Huh. Plenty of secrets. Yeah, I don't know, guys. I really don't. I feel like I should, though. And that's kind of, it's bothering me, but I, I don't know. It was no good. I didn't know anything. Still, I couldn't shake the feeling that I'd seen the ID and password somewhere before. To be continued. I feel like I have the information and I just didn't use it. <laughs> and that's what got me to this ending, right? I had the flashback, I had the premonition, all that jazz, but, but I didn't utilize it apparently. And look, so it's not even locked there. It just has a novel segment and then it moves on to the next one. So I clearly have the information. I just don't know what it is or I'm not recalling it, but I must have found the user ID and the password based on, I guess, all those dead bodies? Remember death, memento mori. If the ninth line ate the sun. Interesting, very interesting. It's also interesting to note that none of the information we found on this timeline unlocked any of the other timelines we've already played through. And just look at how much more there is to play in this game. It's nuts how much content there is here. But anyways, I'm gonna sit on this one for a while, guys. I hope you guys are patient enough to not get frustrated with me for not realizing whatever password it is, uh, whatever user ID it is either um, for this timeline. But I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This was definitely an exciting one. This timeline in and of itself has been really probably one of my favorites with all of its twists and turns. And I hope you guys have enjoyed it just as much as I have. But until the next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.